Hi guys, so as you can see today I'm on the road. I have um, I have a commitment to provide you with content, a new video every day for the month of August, but over the weekend I was unable to. Today is Monday. Tomorrow I'm busy as well, so I'm on the road today. I'm going to try to get some videos done. Now, let me get into the normal start. Welcome to Radius, the channel. Our mission is to simplify success principles and make them available so you can have them and use them as you see fit in carving out your own version of success. The way we get content for the channel is that we ask you questions and we attempt to answer your questions with our videos. Today's question is, why do men blame women for everything that is going wrong in their relationship? Now, we are not agreeing that that is in fact the situation. But we know that from time to time, partners would blame each other when things are not going so good in the relationships. So in today's video, we are going to look at some dysfunctional behaviors or behaviors that do not do any good really when treating with issues or conflicts in a relationship. And we're also going to look at some behaviors that would work well if you apply them in treating with the issues that you're encountering. Now, the first behavior we would look at is blaming because that's what the video, that's what the caller, the um, viewer, was asking about. Blaming. Blaming serves no useful purpose. We need to get that out of the way. We need to get, we need to, to make that clear at the onset. Blaming serves no useful purpose. What it does, it actually takes the attention off of the issue and shifts the attention to the individuals. And the individuals, they now attempt to defend themselves so they engage in defensive behaviors as opposed to looking at the real issues and attempting to find a means of treating with or addressing the issue or issues themselves so blaming serves no useful purpose a second thing we could talk about or we want to talk about in this video is forcing your partner to do something against their will imposing your will on your partner that too serves no useful purpose because if it takes force to initiate, it will take force to sustain. That is to say, if I'm forcing you to do something, then I must be directly involved in you doing it. On your own, you would not want to do it. So forcing our partners to do things that they do not want to do or imposing on our will on our partners, that too is dysfunctional. The third thing we want to talk about in today's video is there's this situation where you are treating with a particular episode of conflict or a particular issue in your relationship and you attempt to silence your partner by embarrassing them with low blows. What we call low blows. Sensitive information you have about your partner but you just can't treat with the issue that, that you're faced with at the moment so you just try to embarrass them into not talking, embarrass them into remaining quiet. Let me give you an example. You may be faced with a challenge of, um, you want to talk about perhaps a, a partner or another, your partner might be looking at um, another lady walking in the mall or something like that. And you don't want to, to confront that as a situation. You don't want to be assertive enough to confront that as a situation. But you may some, say something like, um, Last night you couldn't even handle one lady, but today you're looking at two. So low blows, using things to embarrass your partner, as opposed to treating with a particular situation. That would produce no good. Another thing we want to talk about is unloading. Bringing things from the past, bringing up things from the past. So you have a situation that you're dealing with, and instead of focusing on current specifics of that situation, you bring up things like, you remember you forgot my birthday last time and you forgot our anniversary and Valentine's Day you didn't even remember to give me a gift. So unloading and bringing things from the past up would serve no useful interest in a current episode of conflict. We want to get rid of these kinds of behaviors. The final one, the final dysfunctional behavior we will talk about today is minimization. And what is minimization? Is actually 
attempting to trivialize your partner's concerns. So your partner may be discussing something with you that they do not like, and you would say, it's, I can't believe that is what you are knowing about. That is so childish. That is what you're vexed about. That is what gets you so angry. So trivializing your partner's concern is another dysfunctional behavior. So there are several dysfunctional behaviors that we engage in, and there are some behaviors that would work well in treating with some of the challenges that you may have with your partner. Let me give you about five behaviors that should be encouraged. One is openness. And openness simply means that you are willing to entertain ideas that are different from your own. You are willing to see your partner in terms of who they are and judge the contribution they are making in the current situation regardless of the way you feel, you feel or your feelings on that situation. So you are willing to entertain their ideas and give it the respect it deserves even though it's not the way you see things. That's openness. Another area we want to try or we want to attempt in dealing with conflict is positiveness or positivity. And what is that? That is going into an episode of conflict with the hope of arriving at a positive outcome. So some people may go into conflict and say, I know this is never gonna work, I don't even wanna hear them, but I'm just gonna pretend that I'm listening. So they are not going in with a positive outcome. So positiveness is about, <coughs> excuse me, going in with that hope of a positive outcome. It's also going in with the hope that I'm gonna look at the positive, what we agree on. What is good about this situation? We're gonna talk about what is good about this situation. We're gonna to try to deal with this in a positive way. That's positiveness. Another quality we can encourage is equality. And equality is a willingness to see your partner as an equal person in the episode of conflict. So notwithstanding, you may be the dominant one for different reasons and dominant, quote unquote, for different reasons. Maybe in this particular context, you may have more information, you may be more intelligent, you may be um, providing the, the family with money. And this could be male or female. Any one of us could be dominant at a particular point in time. But notwithstanding that you are dominant in the situation, you are still willing to view your partner as equal, such that you bring about, you, you agree on an outcome that is fair to both parties. So equality is exceptionally important. A third quality we will talk about is empathy. A willingness to put yourself in your partner's shoe. To see things from the other person's perspective. When you do that, it's not about your own idiosyncratic um, tendencies. It's not just about you. It's about us. You're willing to put yourself in your partner's shoe and talk from their perspective, see things from their perspective and come to a solution from a perspective where both parties' situation or concerns or fears or needs or interests are taken into consideration. Another quality we want to talk about or we want to encourage is supportiveness. And this is the final quality we talk about in this video here. Supportiveness and supportiveness is even if we're not in a position to come up with a solution that both parties are satisfied with or are pleased with, we're going to actually be supportive of our partners in addressing a concern that may be legitimate. Let me give you an example of that. In a previous video, we talked about um, ladies' night out where a wife wanted to go ladies' night out and their partner did not want them to go. And so in supportiveness, you may say, I'm not going to allow you to go ladies' night out. I, I'm not going to support that. But I understand that you feel lonely sometimes. I understand that you're bored sometimes. So I am going to invest in perhaps um, Netflix, um, internet. Um, perhaps we could do things together more often than we, we used to. So I'm going to support in the sense of I'm going to attempt to address the loneliness that you feel, notwithstanding I'm not going to agree to the full ladies night out. So supportiveness is extremely important in treating with issues of conflict in our relationships. So that brings us to the end of this video here. We wanted to talk about um, dysfunctional behaviors and progressive behaviors in treating with conflict. I hope I answered the question. Guys, if you're not subscribed, now is a good time to subscribe. This is all we do on the channel. We attempt to 
solve some of the issues and challenges that may be holding you back in terms of some of those things you want to achieve. So see you in the next video.